Hi, Kat here for Lightwave Digital. As a longtime Turbulence FD user, it pleased me to no end to find that Lightwave was now going to include, as a native to developed and further developed plugin, Turbulence FD starting with 2023 and going forward. It also made me very happy that with the inclusion of the Lightwave Pro Tools, we would have access to a preset system for Turbulence FD. Here, for example, I have an explosion that's taken from my uh, conventional weapons kit. And I really like this. I want to save it out as a preset. But how do I do that? Well, before we didn't have the option, we'd have to do something like load items from scene and load the whole thing in. And it was a little bit impractical. So now we have access to a preset system. To find this preset system, you need to load it into your Terminals FD menu. So if you want to find it, a really easy thing to do is just type in the preset, your keyword preset. And look down here and you'll see LD add turbulence FD presets. Now I've already got it in here and I've changed the name just to make it a little bit shorter to fit into my window menu over here. But that's where you would find it and you just drag it over and poof, you'd have the button right there. Now I'm going to just remove that because I've already got one. And we'll go on the next step of saving out presets. Now, preset system for Turbulence FD is a little bit different than what some people might be used to with surfaces or for hypervoxels. And the reason generally is because there's a different type of set of parameters that you might want to save. In this case, collision objects, emitters, and the container itself. I'm mostly interested in the container here because that's where all my important settings are, like the smoke shader, fire shader, the mapping, color and opacity, the subgrid detail, all that stuff. But also things like the voxel size, the simulation, how it was created, uh, sub-steps, turbulence values, vorticity, that sort of thing, temperature, density, fluid. So if I wanted to you know, uh, change the simulation in a new scene, but I wanted all the parameters for the shader, they would come in. Now, in order to save this, we need to hit that magical button, and you're going to be prompted with two windows. It's going to come up with a very familiar looking preset window, and you're going to get an extra window called LD Terminals FD Presets. Now, the little thing about this is a lot of people kind of ignore text that's in here. Um, nothing that's important information, but if you read this and you're presented with a red square, a red squares are emitters, green are colliders, and blue are containers. To apply, select the object null and then apply the preset. Multiple OBJ is possible. Um, use page up and down the browser to cycle your libraries. So there's your instructions. Now, we're only going to be working with just this container uh, for the moment. So I'm going to change its name to call it IED container. And I'm going to give it the scene name for RO4. And I'm going to just go with that. So now I'm going to add that preset. So it's going to use the OpenGL view as my preset image for that. Now, I don't want that. I can actually go and change that. I can use either VPR, um, if it was open, it would snapshot that and put it in there. Or I can choose a frame that I've rendered out. In this case, I've already got it set. And there we go. Now, when I mouse over this, you'll see some text pop up here. And it will tell you that it's the ID container for R04, which matches over to this. Okay. And it's also got in the lower field, Turbulence FD preset IED container. So it's telling me that that's the container. So I'd like to keep those named container or vol container or something similar. But if you started with this without any render or without uh, anything done to it for preset, you would get those red squares are emitters, green are colliders, and blue are containers. So if you get any of them, you'd be able to change them very quickly. Let's go and um, save out the mine fractured ground. Uh, Landmine ground. Fracture one, let's go frac one, okay. And we will add that as a preset. So it turns green because there's really nothing in here to give you an indication as to what it is. So we're gonna go and change that, make it the render that I had. Okay, so now would come the time, for example, uh, where I would want um, to have one of the emitters. Let's go with the explosion ball. This is um, one of the most important ones because this is actually the emitter. This is the particles that create part of that explosion. Okay, so we're going to call this landmine explosion ball. RO2. 
Okay, and we're going to add a preset. And of course, because it is a collider as well as an emitter, I'm going to replace that image, and we're going to go with like that. Okay, so this is great. Um, I've got this saved. Now, what do I do when I want to put it into a new scene? Let's clear things out here, and we'll demonstrate that right now. Okay, well, let's, we're just starting from basically a fresh scene. All right, now let's do first things first. Brand new scene because TFD is considered to be a legacy volumetric. We're going to turn this button on in the render properties under the volumetrics tab so we can see what's going on. Okay, we can effectively close that now. And we can go over to our Turbulence FD window and we're going to go to the Turbulence FD presets. And we are going to go and add a container. And we can change this just go volcon okay all right now we're going to double click the IEDF or IED uh, container for and we're gonna load that and you're gonna be prompted with the thing that says copy externals to current contract directory current contract directory which we want and you notice here right off the bat that um, when I snap through the timeline the container is going to visually size itself to the appropriate settings that were designated in that preset, loading it onto the new container. And you can see that all of my settings are preserved, including the location of the cache directory from the original container itself. And you can see that it plays back and all the shading is intact. So here's our viewport selection. The smoke and fire shader all have their original values that were stored in the preset. So I don't have to try to rebuild it from hand and maybe miss a value and it changes the look dramatically. Um, all of our F curves are preserved as they should be. Or as if we loaded this as a load items from scene method of getting something from one scene to another. So this is pretty much ready to go. Let's go to the camera and move ourselves away from this container a little bit. Whoops, select the camera, Shift-C for the camera, and move ourselves away from that explosion, and we'll go back down to, oh, I don't know, frame 29, just rotate our camera a little bit so that we're looking at this explosion. I can see that uh, everything is where it needs to be. So let's um, just create that keyframe at zero, delete that one, and we now have an explosion that is ready to go. So you could have a very, very complicated scene that requires you just for speed purposes to take only the elements that are necessary to create your TFD effect, create it over there and then load in the container, load it onto a null with all the presets, um, parameters stored from your original scene that you've created off to the side, then load it into your main scene, pop it onto a container and then load it and away you go. And this of course, if you go and delete your cache directories, um, after the fact, you're going to have to go and load up your original one, um, cache out a new TFT cache, and then move it over via this method with the preset system by just loading a blank container, load the preset, and away you go. Now, let's say I wanted to load the original explosion object. I could do that here. Let's go explosion you know, one, mine one, with the explosion ball. Okay, now this was a combination. Let's go back to the perspective view for a sec so we can see where that ball is. So we can see it's way, way off up here. But if we open up the emitters tab and we go back to our preset shelf, there's the explosion ball. Double clicky. And poof, it is now Explosion Ball 2, and we've got all the original settings in here. So if I wanted to move just extra additional stuff over, get it all ready to go, work it out off to the side, import it this way, rebuild this shot without actually having to do a load items from scene, you can do that too. There's different ways that you can make this workflow work for you.
but it's very, very handy to just be able to go in there and go boom, boom, here are the presets, this is what everything is stored with. And of course, you can create your own libraries for this. Um, you can you know, add them to projects, and it's very much appreciated that this tool exists now because we didn't have this capability the entire time while TFD was an external third-party developed plugin. So now that it's internal and now that we've got access to these LD Pro tools, it's all coming into a uh, under one roof kind of approach for workflow and it greatly will improve um, how easy it'll be to carry visual effect looks from shot to shot uh, working with just you know a couple of really good solid looking explosions and containers but hey modify where that explosion goes off in a scene change this change that load the presets and you've got a really really good solid framework for being able to migrate looks and um, uh, settings between your shots. All right, that concludes this video. We'll get to see you in more of them very shortly.